Hey guys, welcome back to another video at Jensen's Reptiles. Uh, today I want to talk about something uh, near and dear to my heart, and that is uh, taming snakes. Now, you don't tame a snake in the same way that you would a kind of wild dog or anything like that. Uh, they are quite different. Um, but what we want to build is not only a tolerance, but some form of enjoyment and enrichment for the animal so that they can display behaviors that are natural to them. Now, I'm currently sitting in front of uh, Mopani's enclosure and I'm filming with one hand and kind of just holding her with the other, maneuvering her around a little bit. Um, and the reason I'm sitting with Mopani is that she's such a good example of uh, a snake that originally came in not so happy. Um, that's been the case with a few of mine, especially the ones that have been rescued. Um, Mop's story is actually a little bit different because we found her loose in a pet shop. So she was previously up for sale, but she'd escaped her enclosure. And um, yeah, she, she was loose and we found her in a pile of Mopani wood, which is why she got her name. Um, when we got her home, Mopani wanted to do nothing more than uh, just bite chunks out of me whenever she could. And I'm talking changing her water or uh, checking temperatures, any kind of involvement in her enclosure. And she was not a happy girl. You can see now she's uh, just super curious. <laughs> um, but yeah, so what I wanted to talk about was what to do in those situations where you have a snake that's, that's really unhappy. Because I, I truly believe that the reason Mop was trying to bite was that she felt completely uncertain of uh, where she was and if the space was hers or not, if she was safe. Um, she'd spent two weeks being rather cold. It was, it was winter time uh, when we found her. Um, she hadn't eaten for those two weeks and she was very young. So she was hungry and she was just very unhappy. So me trying to interact with her didn't go well because she was so afraid. And because, you know, I, I really want to have good interaction with my animals that, um, not to sound like a, a total baby, but it hurt my feelings a little bit because I, I just wanted the best for her. And what I had to realize was that um, time and patience and understanding was the best for her. Uh, previously, if I'd touched her like this, just the, the feel of my skin on her skin would have sent her into a right spin. Um, she was flailing wildly, and if I got her out of the enclosure, she would absolutely bite me without fail. Um, so it's taken a lot of time, but what I want to do is show you a few tools uh, that can really help, and why. So anyone who's familiar with uh, snake handling, especially um, venomous snakes, uh, or particularly aggressive snakes, will have seen uh, these tools before. So these are snake hooks. This is a little telescopic one here, which is great for uh, baby snakes. And this is a slightly bigger one, which is great for snakes around more pony size now. Not that we need it for her, but it's good to have on hand just in case. We have a couple of animals that um, are better handled with the hook because they don't uh, appreciate human contact as much, which is totally fine. Um, the reason these are good is because you can maneuver your snake uh, without them feeling your skin. You send an electrical impulse through your skin, which they can pick up on straight away, and that's why they'll jolt away when touched by a human hand rather than a branch or indeed a snake hook. So. They're great for that. You can move your snake's head away from your hands if you're worried about being bitten, um, but you can also lift them up and manoeuvre them if you need to get them out of the enclosure and they're not so friendly just yet. So with Mopani, um, these were helpful in some scenarios. Um, we actually only ever used the little one with her and it was purely so that we could keep her head slightly away from hands while we were manoeuvring the rest of her body to make sure that she did get used to the contact without us getting bitten because getting bitten by any size snake 
it's not fun for them, it's not fun for you. Um, it doesn't particularly hurt, but the shock is enough to get some adrenaline coursing, and immediately you're going to be a bit more stressed. And the last thing you want to do when you're handling a snake is have any kind of stress. It's, it's just not a, uh, a good feeling <laughs> when you're already a bit nervous. So the hooks are great, but they do have their downside. And the downside is you can't actually feel the pressure you're applying um, unless you're really used to using them. So at the same time as you're pulling on your snake, they're pulling away. And if you're holding them in your hand, that's the moment where you'd release pressure and move with them. However, with the hook, you can't necessarily feel how hard they're pulling or how hard you're pulling. Um, and it may not be that you hurt your snake, but they're certainly not going to be comfortable. So if you do use a hook, use it as a support mechanism. Use it as something that will maneuver your animal rather than kind of pulling them back to you. Just kind of maneuver the head a little bit and most often, <laughs> more often than not, your snake will want to move away from you rather than moving towards you unless they are uh, particularly defensive or even aggressive in some cases. So those are two tools that um, would come in handy in uh, situations like with Mopani. Now, the other thing is gloves. So I'm not talking about the big hefty snake gloves which you can't feel anything through. I am talking about plain old gardening gloves. Now, I say plain old gardening gloves, there is one difference which makes these gloves absolutely fantastic, and that is that they are rough on the inside. They feel just like a tree branch. So if you are getting your snake to climb on you, and they're already used to climbing on the branches that are hopefully in their enclosures, these gloves actually work a treat. And the way Mopani has been um, tamed, so to speak, actually the way Mopani's just become more comfortable around us, was by using these gloves. Um, these are a little small. <laughs> um, I wish I'd gone for the next ones up, but they did the job just fine. And uh, we don't actually need them anymore, which is wonderful, but they're handy to have around just in case one of the animals is in a bit of a mood. So, like I was saying about that electrical impulse that they feel through your hands, they don't feel that through the glove. And we've got a rubber glove here on the inside. It's nice and rough, as I said. So you can train your snake using two of these. Now you can feel all of the pressure that you're applying, which is great. Issue is, you're still using gloves and you're not holding your snake with your bare hands. So what you want to do is get down to just using one glove. Now you use this glove to maneuver the snake's upper half, uh, including their head, and you use your ungloved hand to maneuver their back half. That way you've got a bit of control over them. You're not going to get bitten. And if you do get bitten on this glove, you're not going to feel anything. Um, but they're getting used to you touching them. And it'll come to a point where you don't need the gloves at all. And you've got an animal that, like Mopani here, is actually super keen just to come over and say hello a lot of the time. And she doesn't mind when I touch her. You see she's actually flinching a little bit there. <laughs> so maybe she does mind a little bit. Um, most likely because she is climbing up on her lamp at the moment. But we've gone from having a snake that if I walk past the enclosure she would lunge at the glass or even try and attack the shadow that I made on the back of her enclosure sometimes so it, it really does just show she was so terrified um, and we have a you know quite a few rescue snakes here that have come in from uh, fairly um, unimaginable conditions who have been very very similar to that now Mopani was an extreme case in some ways but it was such an understandable situation that we just wanted to make sure she got time and patience and care and you know support just to be herself. And we have this wonderful, goofy jungle carpet python who is weirdly usually happy to see us and is a sweet natured animal. And all it took was just that little bit of patience and understanding. And um, I wouldn't change her for the world. She's a wonderful snake. And she's, she's inquisitive and very, very calm and relaxed and uh, a pleasure to handle. So it just shows all you need is a bit of time and patience. 
So yeah, so that's my uh, rant and ramble for today. I hope it helps somebody. Let me know if you have any of your own tips and suggestions. Uh, let me know what experiences you've had too. And hopefully we can all help each other to learn more about our wonderful snakes. And uh, from me and my pony, we'll say goodbye. I hope you're having a great day and we'll see you soon.